this one is 3.7 and this problem is very similar to problem 3.3 .3 we have done earlier so in this case there are these two supports here and here so there will be reactions r1 and r2 and there is this uniformly distributed load now the distance for this support here is l and after this support this distance is a right here so if we want to find out these reactions we can write down r1 plus r2 equals to this equivalent force coming from this distributed force which will be right at the center here the value of this force is going to be w naught l plus a because it's acting on a distance of l plus a and this distance right here is going to be l plus a divided by 2 okay so your r1 plus r2 is going to be w naught times l plus a and if i take moment about this first point i have w naught l plus a times l plus a divided by 2 that's the distance clockwise moving because of this this will be balanced by r2 and the distance there is l so from here we can get the value of r2 which is w naught over 2l l plus a whole square and if i substitute this value back into this equation or i can take moment for the second point i get the value of r1 as w naught over 2l l square minus a square so to analyze this we will need two cuts one here which is between the supports and one right here so let's call this cut one and this one as cut two for cut one we will analyze the left part here because that is simple to analyze for cut two we can analyze the right part there so if i draw the free body diagram for cut one i'll have this beam which has this reaction force r1 and this distributed force over a distance of x because we always make cut at a distance of x and since we have a positive phase opening up here we can mark these values as v1 and mv1 now this uniformly distributed force we can replace it with a point force so this becomes w naught x there and the distances from both sides here and here is going to be x by 2 and x by 2 Similarly, if I draw the cut on the right hand side, which is your cut 2, so this portion right here, which when I draw that, again your distributed force is going to come. And now, since we have a negative phase opening up here, so your shear force is going to be down. So this is V2, this is MB2. The distance right here is going to be L plus A minus X because if your cut is happening at x total length of this beam is l plus a so l plus a minus x is going to be in this part right here so if i replace it by a point load right at the center the value of this is going to be w naught l plus a minus x and this distance is going to be half of this right here so divide by 2 is going to be distance from here to here now we can analyze both of these parts so if I analyze cut 1, I get the value of V1. V1's role is to balance these two here. So we can write it as W0 X minus R1. Similarly, your MB1 here. MB1 is going to balance moment coming from these two. So minus of W0 X square divided by 2 because W0 X is the force and X by 2 is the distance. And this R1 sitting at a distance of X from there. These are the values of V1 and M MB1. When I come here, I can see that your V2 is W0 with a minus sign L plus A minus X because V2 is balancing this one right here. And your MB2 is going to be minus W0 L plus A minus X. This is the force. And the distance is going to be L plus A minus X by 2. So this becomes a square divided by v1 is valid between cut 1 so the boundary points are x equals to 0 and x equals to l here so your value of v1 for x equals to 0 if i substitute 0 here is minus r1 which is given right here so minus w naught over 2l l square minus a square now for x equals to l we can substitute it here we are going to get a value v1 which is w naught 
L minus R1. So if I substitute it, value of R1 here, we get double naught over 2L, L square minus A square. So if I solve this, I get double naught over 2L times L square plus A square. Now let's check the value of MB1 here mb1 at x equal to 0 if i substitute x0 here i get 0 and mb1 at x equals to l if i substitute it here i get minus w naught l square divided by 2 plus r1 times l and if we substitute the value of r1 from here and simplify this this comes out as minus w naught over 2 a square now looking at your v2 v2 will be evaluated from x equals to l here to x equals to l plus a. so for x equals to l your v2 value which is right here is going to be minus w naught a because l and l this will cancel out from here and at x equals to L plus A, your V2 value is going to be 0 in this case. Now similarly for MB2, if we check at x equals to L here, we can check this value is going to be minus double naught, L and L again cancels out, so we have double naught A square by 2, and at x equals to L plus A, the whole thing cancels out, so your MB2 value is going to be 0. Now in both of these cases, your MB1 and as well as MB2, both of these are parabolas. So we have seen the endpoints here, we need to understand their peak. Now both of these parabolas, because their coefficient of x square is negative in both cases here, so both of them are going to be opening down. So they are going to attain a peak somewhere. So for the first case, your peak will happen wherever your shear force is going down 0. So if you look at this equation here, which is V1, so you can see V1 equals to 0 is happening when your x is equals to r1 divided by w0 so if i check the value of r1 which is right here so we are going to get this at l square minus a square divided by 2l this is the value of x where your mb1 is going to attain its peak value okay now for your mb2 here you can see that the slope of this equation right here is going to be 0 at x equals to l plus a so at x equals to l plus a, the slope of dmb2 over dx is going down to 0. And that you can confirm by the value of v2 also, 0 happening at the same point. So your peak will happen at x equals to l plus a for mb2. Okay. So let's summarize all the values that we've got so that we can make the shear force and bending one diagram. So, P1 at 0 is minus R1, which is minus W0 over 2L, L square minus A square. V1 at L is W0 over 2L, L square plus A square. Value of MB1 at 0 is equals to 0. Value of MB1 at L is minus W0 A square divided by 2. V2 value at x equals to L is equals to minus W0 A. V2 at L plus A is equals to 0. MB2 value at L is minus W0 A square divided by 2. And MB2 value at L plus A is equals to 0. Now for MB1, your peak is happening at a value where your V1 equals to 0. So your x value at that point is L square minus A square divided by 2L. And the peak for your MB2 is happening at x equals to L plus A. So let's start plotting this. So this is your cut 1 area where we will plot V1 and MB1. And this one is your cut 2 area. So for your V1, this is the value at 0 and L. So at 0, it's going to be a negative value somewhere here. And at L, there's a positive value here. So we can connect them by a straight line this value right here is minus w naught l square minus a square divided by 2 l and this one is w naught l square plus a square divided by 2 l 
Now at x equals to L, we have these two values for V2. So this is minus W naught A here and at L plus A becomes 0. So we can again connect them. So this is how your shear force diagram looks. We have added all the values there. The convention for this is plus on this side, negative on the other side. Now for the bending moment diagram, we need to plot mv1 between these two ends. So value of mv1 at 0 is 0. So we are starting here. At L we have this value here. So maybe somewhere here. This is minus w naught a square divided by 2. Now this is the point where your peak is happening which is x equals to L square minus A square divided by 2L. So your parabola since it's opening down will start from here. Take the peak at that point then follow it up so that it can reach this point right here in this manner. Now for your MB2 the value at x equals to L is exactly same which is here and on the right side it is 0 so it needs to be there. Parabola has to be opening down getting a peak at L plus A which is right here. So you can complete this parabola in this manner so that your slope is 0 on the other side. So we can mark the boundary for this. Highlight it and the values here. So on the negative side we have the highest value which is minus W naught A square by 2. This value right here is W naught divided by 2 L square minus A square divided by 2 L whole square. So this is the positive maximum and this one is negative maximum and the convention for your movement is this right here. So that's the shear force and bending moment diagram for this given day.